E2, y'all. Yeah. There it is. How's everybody doing? Hi. I got nothing. Hi. Donald, I was going to say, I'm like, I think you got it. Guys, oh my gosh. are you excited to be Hi. here? C2E2? Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, I'm really? very excited. You're Hi. excited. I'm here with the cast of Clueless. Give it up. Yeah, guys, we got Donald Faison, on Alicia Silverstone, and Brecken Meyer. I'm and very excited about And our this. special guest, Daniel Ratcliffe. I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm not here. I'm sorry. I'm totally kidding. Sorry, guys. I Harry thought he Potter's was really coming here. out. Yeah, yeah. Harry he Potter's not it. here. Yeah. Um, guys, it's so awesome to be here. You guys were trending yesterday. Your cast reunion on Twitter was going nuts. It was all over. That's was what's that... up. How yeah. many people uh, saw Scrubs when it actually came out in the movie theater? Put your hands up. Say, you just said Scrubs. Oh, I did? Nobody. Hey, how many people saw the Scrubs movie? Yeah. <laughs> I blew this one. Well, good night. How many people saw Clueless when it came out in the movie theater? Put it up. Right on. How many people's parents introduced you to Clueless? Just letting him go. Really? Some of y'all are young. How many of y'all have never seen Clueless? Put your hand up. Get out! What? <laughs> what are you doing here? How many of y'all have seen Scrubs? Woo! Get out! <laughs> How many of y'all have seen Garfield? Put him up. <laughs> Oh, you guys. Any of y'all seen Aerosmith videos back in the day? Put your hands up. Yeah, baby. That's when I fell in love. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, we could just do this. Do Sorry, Jackie, ask? you were saying. No, I'm loving it. Like, uh, let's just ask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you guys were trending. Is that crazy awesome? It's 24 years later, I think. Does it feel like that, or does it feel like, no, we were just shooting the Val party yesterday? Uh, wow. Uh, we, we were out <laughs> late last night, so it definitely yeah. feels like 24 years right yeah. now. For sure. Because we were out pretty late last night, and that's our fault. And you were fun in Chicago? I don't know where oh, we went. We were somewhere in the, in the town. It we, was nice. Yeah, if we, we ran into you last night, we had fun, didn't we? <laughs> Yes, we, we got in, we found this incredible underground fight club. Oh my God. It was amazing. It was Shatner, Patrick Stewart, oh, man. us. Yeah. It was amazing. Whoa, who won? We beat the, oh, I can't say well, there's a little girl here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we beat the poop out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah How old are you? Six? Oh, she can say whatever Have you want. Have you ever seen Clueless? You, you haven't seen Clueless. Have you seen Garfield? Get out. <laughs> I don't care. Are your parents here? You're her mom? Hey, mom. You haven't done right. All right? Garfield's wholesome. Bit of a weight problem on Garfield. Not going to lie to you. But you're going to have to see it on the way home. Yeah, watch it on the plane. Yeah. You can stream it. <laughs> you can stream it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you guys, it's been 24 years. Why do you think this movie, I mean, I'm guessing it has something to do with the fun and chemistry of the cast, but why do you guys think it still resonates so much with people? Uh, you know, I think it was before, you know, it was early. You know what I mean? It yeah. came before its time. If you look out in the audience now, there are a lot of people holding up their cell phones, taking pictures and everything like that. And yeah. I feel like we started that revolution. We, you know, showed that you know, uh, this is, we showed the future, I feel like, you know, and uh, yeah. you disagree? Reckon disagrees? You disagree. <laughs> no, I just love it. The question was, why do you think it last, has been lasting so long? And your first reaction was, because it was early. <laughs> it was early. It was early. We just got there early in the morning, and we made a No, but you know what I mean. No, they I know, know exactly what I mean, what and now mean. you're just being, come on, I'm man. just yeah. joking think... with you. Let's not do this in front of them, okay? Oh, it's, Hello? yeah. Alicia, yeah. yeah. You can hear me? Oh. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> Alicia? Um, I think that Amy Heckerling uh, took Jane Austen's Emma and made an incredible adaptation of it. Yeah. And I think that uh, that story, you know, she hit on pop culture. What I think Donald's trying to say is it hit, it hit something, you know, she always had her ear to the street when she did Fast Times at Ridgemont High. She really captured that time and that era perfectly and I think she did that for the 90s so I think it just is a 
you know, it's proven to be sort of a classic that people really enjoy. And I think it's her brilliance. I think it's a really wonderful story. Yeah. Yeah. It's Donald. Is that That's what, what I meant to say. Yeah. That's what he meant by yeah. early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was early. And it's fun that, um, you know, people like grandparents come over to me and say they, and I'm always confused by that. But then I think they were watching it because their kids were watching it. And then their kids now are passing it on to other little people, their little people. So, every, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, um, every generation is seeing the movie, and it's really fun that it keeps going around. Yeah. Can you guys talk a little bit about how you each came to the movie? What was your audition process like, your casting, first days on the set, maybe first nap on the set? Right? <laughs> um, I auditioned, I guess it was, what, what, what's it called, like, No Worries originally? It was called No Worries at yeah. Fox. At oh. Fox. Oh. And uh, then it, I auditioned for it then, and then it went away, and then it came back around, and it was, then it was called Clueless after yeah. that, right? Yeah. And I, I auditioned, I'm from New York City originally, so I auditioned nice. in New York, and they flew me out to Los Angeles to read with this young lady right here and Stacy Dash. And uh, I remember walking out of the audition and uh, Twink Kaplan, who played Mrs. Geist in the movie yeah. and also is a producer on the project, was like, are you happy? I was like, well, if you guys cast me, I am. She was like, we wouldn't fly you out here if, uh, <laughs> if we weren't going to hire you. So I knew right after my audition that I got it. And then it took a really long time for us to get into shooting. But yeah, I remember that. I remember the audition uh, process. It was great. Nice. Yeah. How about you guys? What was your, was it similar? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> My so favorite thing ago. is that Alicia, we're not sure if Alicia was there when we made the movie. I don't know if I made that she movie. She remembers yeah. nothing. By the way, also, because she was so busy, she had 175 costume changes. Donald and I were just like jackalopes in our trailer. I'm trying to skateboard, <laughs> and he's goofing off and whatnot. And Alicia had to work 24-7 on this movie. Yeah. Well, can I ask you, we'll get with the costumes. Like, I see people out here cosplaying as Cher. I just saw a Cher Horowitz, that iconic, uh, mm -hmm. the yellow plaid. Does yeah. it blow your mind when you see people cosplaying as a character that you played? Oh, it's so fun. Every Halloween, it's really fun, too. And I love when um, when men dress up as Cher. It's really fun. Yes. I like that a lot. Um, Someone just raised their hand <laughs> like that. Oh, OK. It's all right, dude. It's oh, all right. Got it, got it, got it. But I do remember that I. I I, uh, do, I remember the process of the casting. It's come to me now. So oh, okay. <laughs> delayed reaction from our <laughs> evening. Um, but I, I had uh, Amy, he I know, I met Amy Heckerling in a restaurant. And she said the reason she cast me, which is completely absurd, but I suppose it's, be I mean, it's not absurd, it's fine, but she saw me. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. It worked out okay. <laughs> But she saw me um, drinking from my glass, but instead of lifting it up to drink the straw, I guess I was putting my head down to the straw. <laughs> so she thought I was like a puppy, she said. <laughs> so that's why she wanted me to be in the movie. So I didn't audition that time. I just met her and then she asked me to do it. But then they ended up stopping the movie and it was gonna go, I don't know if I did my screen test at Fox or if I did it at Paramount, but I know eventually I did a screen test where it was just me and uh, it was really exciting and scary, and I had no idea that this movie was going to be anything. I had done nine movies prior to this, and yeah. you know, one of them was The Crush and The Babysitter and Hideaway, and they were all just like, you know, movies that I was doing. So I, I thought it was just going to be another one of those, but this yeah. definitely changed everything. Was there a point? Well, oh yeah, Brecken. Oh no, uh, you said something that I was going to say about, but now I'm oh, that was going to say, it sounds really weird. <clears throat> the movie was called No Worries at first, and it was at 20th Century Fox, and then it got put into what they call turnaround, which is basically when they decide, you know what, we're not going to make this movie. Yeah. Anybody else wants it, God bless. So Paramount was like, oh, we'll take that, and they changed the name to Clueless. I, I remember hearing about it as No Worries, and Sethy, uh, Seth Green and a bunch of people had auditioned for it at, uh, at when it was No Worries, and I was like, why didn't I get this audition? Never did. Then it went to Paramount, and then I got the audition for it. I was a skater kid, so I, I, I literally skated to my audition. 
<laughs> and went in Amy was like, do you skate? And I was like, yeah, that's how I got here. And <laughs> she said, <clears throat> do you wear pads and a helmet? And I was like, no. She's like, well, she's like, but could you? And I'm like, yeah, I can wear a helmet. Yes, I yes, I have, I'm, I have the Are ability to wear a helmet. Wearing a helmet. Yeah, yeah, I was okay wearing a helmet. And it was, it, I think it came down to me and Sethy, oddly enough, for the role of Travis. Oh, weird. Seth Green Aww. and uh, and you guys are really good friends, right? Yeah, we do robot together forever. Yeah. And then it was like him and I for Austin Powers. And robot that chicken, one. guys. He yes. was he was searching for the applause. Robot yes, chicken. Yes, robot yeah. chicken. I wasn't searching, you guys. But they it found matter. you. I'm glad you did it. I can't open this. <laughs> good. It's yeah. small plastic bottle. Yeah. Need it. Good. <laughs> so was there a point? I mean, obviously the movie was uh, hit immediately. Was there a point when you realized it had this life beyond just being super successful at the box office? Um, suddenly you're walking around and everybody knows who you are. Is it, you know, is there a moment when you go, whoa, this is beyond just a movie that did really well. This is something that people are gonna be talking about for a long time, or is it, you know, 10 years after the fact when people are still obsessed with this movie that you go, okay, I think. Well, being here definitely, yeah. you know, reminds you that we were a part of something very special. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 would, I don't think I'd have a career if it, was for this, if it wasn't for this movie. I had been in stuff, but nobody, you know. Um, so, I don't know, yeah, I guess, what is it, 20 something years now? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And the fact that, you know, you guys are all here and you're going to probably go out and show this to your kids and you're going to one day see this movie, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. You right? have to see the movie at some point, okay? Check it out. Okay. Um, that means a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. It means a lot. It means a lot to be here. And so, you know, it wasn't until really yesterday that it really, that I really understood how big this was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until yesterday? Yeah, Is that kinda... why you guys went out last night? Yeah, to yeah. celebrate the fact that we're still a hit. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it, I remember there was a guy when the movie came out, probably a little bit after, like it had probably been on video, but it was pretty recent. And a guy came up to me and said, and he was very serious. So I was like, oh, I did something or I'm about to be served with something or something bad. <laughs> and he said, uh, I just want to tell you, your character, Travis, when he went into, when he did the 12 steps, that's what prompted me to go to rehab and get clean, and the first thing I thought was, well, actually, okay, first thing I thought was, seriously? Yeah. Travis made you go to rehab? I was like, he literally, by the way, he never went to rehab, he did 12 steps and he gave her his bong, yeah. but, yeah. and the second thing I thought was, that's very lovely and sweet. Yeah. But that was where I was like, wow, this, that's really interesting that people are taking a lot from this movie in, in that way, like, you know, he might not be sober anymore, I don't know, but. Right. But it was interesting. For that moment, yeah. Yeah. And also, I will say, there was no girl, there was no girl or guy who didn't want to be Alicia when that movie hit. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It was so Absolutely. iconic, and she was so incredible. Don't tell her I said this, because she'll no. get a big head. No. But she was so engaging and, like, wish fulfillment at the same Like, she was like your dream girl at the same time. She was also kind of like your buddy. Like, she was accessible. And that's yeah. a rare find. And Brittany and Stacy all together, those three together was just like, this is Charlie's Angels. This is insane how good they are. Yeah. yeah. So, Alicia, can you talk? You were, were you, you were actually the same age as Cher, right? Like, you guys were, you guys were all I around. was a little bit older. Okay, I, okay. I think I turned 18 on, I think I turned 18 on set or right. something like that. And, and she was supposed to be 16, 16. I think, or 15, because she yeah. gets her license, right? So yes. After some you've, failed, you've tests. seen you've seen the movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> she does get her license. Yeah, I mean, she, does she? Does she yeah. ever get it? No, she does. She, no, she, totally she does fails. not get it. She, she does not get, get her it. license. She, oh she never God. gets her license. She's trying to attempt to get it, so she must be. Don't you have to be 15 to do that? Or yeah, 16? I don't know. Whatever. 15 or 16. Yeah, yeah. in California. Yeah. So what was it like? playing a character who became and still is so iconic for well there was a funny moment when we were shooting it, i'm thinking of naps right now because i'm remembering two naps that were so sweet uh Brittany murphy and stacy dash were but i would fall because i was in every single scene so i was like so tired and i had yeah. been working on these other eight films before i got to this one 
So I was already, my tank was empty at this point, sure. but I was excited to do it. And um, so we would take naps, and I'd lay in the sun and the girls would lay on my shoulders. And we have a cute picture of us all like that. But also I took a nap while we were shooting the driving scene. So the good news <laughs> is I wasn't driving because I was on a, what are those things called? The um, thing that pulls the car, the oh. trailer? A, tra a trailer? Yeah, a trailer. A picture guess, yeah. car? Picture yeah. car, picture you car. You're welcome. Um, so, but I would, they'd say, um, cut, and I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> Just and then they'd, and the guy next to me would be like, they're gonna start. I was like, I'm cool. <laughs> and then I'd have drool or something, and then they'd say rolling, and I'd go, okay. <sighs> and that was for the scene where you're driving, and she says, whoops, my bad, because she hits the, yes. um, that thing. So that's what happened there. Oh, <laughs> I have to ask about the closet, because I think in addition to Cher, I think Cher's closet was also the envy of yeah. Every, I, want that I hear closet. people saying, "Yeah," and the the questions that um, some of my coworkers were prompting me to ask were, "Why don't we have the closet? Why doesn't it exist?" Which I, is probably not something you have control over. But but <laughs> well, Kanye West one time told me. <laughs> this said, is already a wonderful story. He yeah. sat me down at a Stella McCartney thing, and he was like, "I used I you I, he either said he." learned it from Clueless, or he just did it anyway. But he took Polaroids yes. of his outfits. And I, <laughs> and I was like, that's brilliant. I'm going to start doing that. Because <laughs> it really is helpful when you have to go to a red carpet event or something to see what the outfit looks like. Yeah. Because it's going to photograph entirely different. So I feel like I'm really grateful. I learned a lot about I didn't, when I did Clueless, before, right before we did it, I would go into every audition with a pair of jeans and a green t-shirt with mm -hmm. a little pocket. And that was it, that was all I wore. And so I had no concept of fashion. I actually like it now, yeah. but I'm a grown woman now. But when I was all through my teens and 20s, I didn't get it at all. Yeah, I'm So I'm grateful one day. learning from her and the show and Amy, because Amy was so fashionable. And she and Mona May worked so well together on the costumes. I did another movie with Amy afterwards and I didn't realize when we were doing Clueless because I didn't remember um, how much Amy was in the fittings with me. But this time when we were doing Vance, she like took her t-shirt off. In her, she had her bra on and had put her shirt on me in the middle of the fitting and I was like, that's a commitment. She's just like, <laughs> taking her shirt off and putting it on me. Yeah, she had a vision. <laughs> yeah. So have you guys gone back and because I've had this experience where I watched it obviously when I was however old, 12, 13, and joke, there were jokes that went over my head that as an adult, I went, I remember buying my first pair of Birkenstocks and going, oh, Travis Birkenstock. Yeah, he, was, he was the heir to the sandals throne. <laughs> yes. So are there jokes that you guys at the time, you know, maybe didn't get or you've gone back and gone like, I never even, I wasn't in that scene, probably doesn't apply to you, but you know, and you've seen and said, oh God, that was really funny. That was a great scene. You know, it's it's still fresh in some way for you guys. Yeah, I think I I took my daughter, I took my daughter to see it when, actually, so at least they were showing it outdoors in LA and it was a big thing. My kid had never seen 4, it. 4,000 people outside. Yeah, there was a lot of people outside amazing. watching it at the, a cemetery, oddly enough. But um, <laughs> we, I brought my daughter to see it and she had never seen it before and Seeing it through her eyes was really fun because she got it. Like yeah. she liked it as much as the 15 year old 20 years ago saw it. But one thing that caught me was how dry Rudd was in that movie. <laughs> there's a, like there's a line where he says, "I've got a place that I've got a place near school." Just the way he said that <laughs> yeah. kills me because he's just got this. He added this obnoxious college kid who knows everything yeah. way of speaking where everything is very pronounced. And I got a place near school. You know, and he was just. And good so, like, because other, the other character, like, Travis is such a big character and Murray's so broad with the shaved head and all the fun, but Rudd was like this gravity. He was like kind of like the, the, he was like the weight, the anchor of the movie where he was just so dry and genuine. And everyone knew that college kid with the wispy nickelback goatee <laughs> and all that. And it was so great. It just kills me. Yeah. Um, so, I, I've seen it that this, that Clueless is sometimes classified as a teen movie, which I disagree with. I think it's one of the best comedies ever written, comedy, romantic comedy. Um, do you guys, do you feel like 
Not that it gets the credit it deserves as like a comedy, but yeah, I guess, are you like, is it a teen movie, is it a comedy, is that line, who, you know, who cares? There's no more blockbuster, so it doesn't go on the shelf. But yeah, D do you feel like it's a teen movie or do you feel like it, it kind of transcends genre? I do, that's my opinion. I agree with you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think like John, I mean like Donald was talking about John Hughes movies yesterday and how that yeah. was like clueless for us. And I think about like Breakfast Club and I wouldn't define it as a comedy or yeah. even a teen movie. I would just be like, oh, that iconic movie. Yes, that you iconic know, movie. That I, that I grew up with. I mean, I guess it would be coming of age. Yeah, that's That yeah, would that, be kind of the realm I'd put it. it in. It was just like, oh, that's a it's iconic a coming, of age, coming of age film. Yeah. yeah. Coming I agree with him now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Jackie, agree. I got it. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, we play a question. That's what our 20-sided uh, die here is I thought for. we were going to play D&D. &D. I know. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. I'm um, a fifth-level wizard. Really? No. You okay. are not. <laughs> okay. So you guys will roll. There's questions here on these cards that correspond to the number. I'll ask the question. You guys answer. Do you wanna go Whoever rolling? wants to roll. I'm scared. Donald, you roll. Donald, you want to go? Oh, boy. All right. Anyone can answer. Come on, yeah, Donald. Up. 12. 12, all right. Ooh, what do you remember about the first con you ever attended? Is this it? Oh, wow. Donald? Yeah. Donald Faison? I'm trying to think, dog. Donald Ideoshun <laughs> Faison? I'm trying to think <laughs> how many people there were. Like, you yeah. always hear there's a lot of people there. Until you really step out into that bad boy, you don't really recognize until it's in your face. You're like, oh, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of humanity, yeah. Lisa, you want to go? Oh. Oh. Okay. 12. No. 12? <laughs> what is that? It's a rig. Seven. That's a two. It's a two. Oh, it's a two. OK. It's like 12. So, yeah, it's close. If you were fighting crime, would you banter with the criminals or are you more the silent punching type? <laughs> Never monologue, dude. I would oh. definitely banter. You would banter. You would sort of befriend the, the criminal. Yeah, I don't know, but I would, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I mean, silent punching sounds very cool. I just don't think that's where I'd go. That's fair. All right, yeah, <laughs> banter. I like it. Yep. Brecken? Ooh. One. One. Critical miss. Well. <laughs> Unless it's golf, and then I'm crushing it. <laughs> so I, th I feel like everyone could answer this one. No. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Who would you pick from the cast to be on your zombie apocalypse team? Ooh. So who from the cast of Clueless is going to be on your, like, surviving the zombie apocalypse squad? I would say I will pick... That's very deep. I would it's take very Do deep. I will yeah. take Donald. Uh-huh. Because I think Donald and I have seen enough movies to know the things you're supposed to do and not do. Great. And I just have to outrun him. <laughs> Oh, you know you can't do that, so homie. If I can outrun Donald, we can get Donald, this race going right now, y'all. If I can outrun Donald, then I'm okay, cause they'll spend some time eating him, <laughs> and I'll get away. <laughs> okay. Ant Man. Okay. <laughs> not Paul, Ant Man. No, no. Not Paul. Okay. No. Fair. Who would you pick? And it can be, I guess, for reasons of survival or reasons of throwing them to the zombies. Aww. <laughs> Brecken? I mean, I would want them. I would want them all there, but probably I don't know. I don't know. You could go it alone. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really hung out in the last twenty years, all of us. Okay, so you did last know. night, though, girl. But we did last we night. Did last night. Um, Maybe we won't hang out. I anymore. feel like I've got to ask more <laughs> questions about whatever this this Fight Club. Yeah. Okay. So we were dancing. I mean, this sounds very fun. I'm proud it of was. myself. I took them there. I will say it's you very did? fun. Yeah. 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 At least he took us out like that. We have not. We haven't all hung out in. I can't remember. I mean, probably 20 years. Yeah. And one thing that was kind of fun, unexpected, was we all walked in. 
and you get, depending on who's in front, like Rudd was in front, and Rudd, who doesn't fucking age, it's insane. But, <laughs> so Lestat comes in first, and he, everyone's like, oh my God, Paul Rudd. Oh my God! At least he's Silverstone. Oh my God, Donald! Oh, Brecken brought their coats. Cool, but they were. It was fun to watch the the the, the procession go down yeah. as each person. Because also we're at a bar, so people are already drunk. So at first they're kind of like, that looks like is that fucking is that Paul Rudd? You know what I mean? And, and I it, was, it was it was enjoyable to watch that. Yeah, yeah. being drunk and the cast of Clueless walks in. It's like I've got to go home. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah. whoa! It was very interesting. Don't yeah. go home. Stay and party, girl. Well, no, because I'd assume, that, yeah, that I'm that, drunk. That what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That you were hallucinating. Yeah, yeah, that I'm hallucinating. Yeah. So. so we have time for one more. Who wants to roll? Alicia, you should roll. Alicia, yeah. Uh, you can put it on whatever number you want. It's, I think. That's a not, uh, six. <laughs> six. A six? Okay. I like that it takes two people to tell us what die <laughs> number yeah, we're that all is. Like, that's how late the night was. Yeah, that's what that is. Um, so you're in a giant Game of Thrones style battle. What's your weapon of choice? Donald. The dragon. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just grab yeah. him by the ankles and swing him into people. <laughs> sword. A, sw a A flaming sword. Okay. All right. Flaming sword, dragon, and Donald. <laughs> that was what you chose. I am. Uh, you said Donald. He chose you, right? You would swing me around as your weapon? Yeah. I am flattered, yeah. first of all. You'd kill, you'd like would, totally kill people at the same time you'd charm you, the hell dude. out of them, you know what I mean? I would totally kick yeah. ass for you, buddy. Uh, you guys. Amazing. Because also, it's also like Master Blaster, you know, it's like that type of thing. Or oh, like, nice. He's Wait, the, hold on he's now. He's the mountain. I seen the movie. What? You guys ever see Thunderdome? No, it's a very, no. it's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. Yeah. Deep, deep cut. Okay, uh, go see Thunderdome. You go see Clueless. She's <laughs> no. very busy. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for doing this. This oh, was yeah, so thank fun. You. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah. yeah, and thank you guys yeah. for being here. Stick around. We have tons of fun stuff all weekend. You can follow along with hashtag C2V2. Hashtag it's a fan thing. Oh. And stay, because up next we have the DePaul University eSports program with Katie Wilson. Thank you.